and it's great to see Rose and Glenda especially yes, tonight. Definitely. You know. I was looking forward to it here, but I haven't. Yeah. I don't think it's in there. It's, yeah. it's, uh, but it's a good song. Yeah, I don't like that. He's changing. My pastor, uh, he said, I believe in evolution. I thought, evolution? And he said, he says, I believe man evolves into Christ. And I understood what he was saying. You know, he evolves, not just automatically, but as he abides in the Lord, and the Lord abides in you. As you're dual abiding, there's a fruit produced in that. But uh, a couple things. One is, uh, Jesus' uh, main focus was not you. Jesus' main focus was his Father. And as he obeyed his father, it took him to the cross and he brought salvation to others. Uh, so as your focus is not out here somewhere, as your focus is, is the Lord loving him in your life, following him to the cross, and you'll bring salvation to others by your life. And you'll be Jesus to them. People. But uh, that's what I really wanted to talk about tonight, the cross. And uh, the cross is more than a teaching. The cross is more than a doctrine. It must be put into practice in our lives. Uh, I remember a couple years ago teaching this up at work, and I'm thinking, who's going to get this? I mean, who wants this? It doesn't fill church pews. <laughs> Talking about the cross, losing your life, and you find life. The cross meant death. It meant death. And I believe at Easter time, you know, we growing up, we had the sunrise service and the uh, Easter breakfast, and, and thank the Lord for His resurrection. It's all about Jesus. But I believe He turns around; His heart broke because He says, "You follow Me. You follow that same path. You follow Me. Don't stop. Continue on. I know you you, got, you come to know Me, but continue on." Jesus' main message was, "Follow Me." Follow me. Where were you going? We followed him down along the seashore, but he wants us to follow him to the cross. You see, that's where the rubber meets the road. Many Christians are happy just being saved, just going to heaven. And uh, he's after more than that. The cross is talking about a death, a death to the self life, that the life of Christ will be manifested in us. And uh, that's what he's after. Uh, let's go to Philippians 3. I'd like you, if you write down scriptures, I'd like you to write them down if you have a pencil and paper and go back over them because I'm going to talk about some things. Actually, I was going to go a different direction last night. This morning, I had some things I wrote down, but I went to work and he changed the whole... You know, it's, it's good to bring what he wants. You know, it's... Many times, uh, you know, it's... Man gives a sermon on Father's Day, it's a Father's Day sermon. Mother's Day, it's a Mother's Day sermon. Christmas, it, it, it may or may not be a Christmas story message. It's good to follow the Holy Spirit. It's good to follow Him. And what do you want, Lord? What do you want? Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they, they be the sons of God. But Ephesians, Philippians 3, Paul's weeping. Now, don't take one scripture and run with it. A lot of times somebody will get on a take one scripture and run with it, but make sure you line it up with other scriptures and it fits. Like Nehemiah was a he wept over God's people. Not the world, like I've said just about every week. God's people had sinned and the wall was broken down. Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. He was weeping over God's people. The psalmist says, My tears fall down my eyes because they've forsaken your law. He's not talking about crying over the world. So Jesus wept over Jerusalem, His own. And we find in Philippians 3, Paul is crying. He's crying because there's Christians who are not coming to the cross. They're saved. They go so far, and then they turn away. They turn away. We'll look at that in a little bit. Let's go to Philippians 3. Verses 17 through 19. Paul here, he's talking about knowing Christ. He's already been saved. He says, only one thing I do, I press on towards the mark, the bullseye, a bullseye is Christ. The mark is Christ. That's the goal. For your Christian life, it, your, the goal is Christ, which has already been said here tonight. But he says in verse 17, Brothers, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as you have us for an example. 
For many walk whom I've told you often. Now Paul would remind him over and over again. He's reminding them that it's so easy to walk so far and then to turn aside. He's reminding Paul, or he was reminding these Christians here over and over again about their walk. He says he's reminded them often. What have you been reminding them about, Paul? He says, and now I tell you even weeping. He's crying. Ever write a letter? I remember Mother's Day uh, writing a letter to my mother and tears are coming down on, on the page. This is what's going on with Paul. He's crying. He's crying over Christians. My main message is to Christians. The Bible is written to Christians. And so it's, you know, as we apply it to our life, it says Paul is weeping that they are not enemies of Christ. They are enemies of the cross of Christ. The cross. They come so far and then they turn aside. Whose end, he's describing the, these of the many here, who, who are enemies of the cross, whose end is destruction. That doesn't even, not mean hell, it means loss, ruin, waste. So their end, these, these Christians end because they're not coming to the cross. They're, they're, they're experiencing the loss of life that Christ wanted to give them. So they're coming into, their end is destruction. Whose God is their belly? They're very satisfied with themselves. Self-satisfaction, you know. Their God's their belly. Whose glory is their shame? Hey, do you know I'm a teacher, I'm a preacher. You know, I'm going... You know, taking the glory to himself. No, it's I exalt thee. Tony, thank you for that word tonight. I exalt thee. You know, we don't hear the word surrender anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm glad because you must have been looking at my notes here because surrender. It should be more word, I believe. Help me, Lord, to surrender all. Mm -hmm. Because I can't really surrender all in a moment when it takes a lifetime of surrendering. Yes. In 1985, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I got saved as a teenager. But I, like I said before, I thought for years I was deceived. I thought I gave Him my, my life when I was 13. No, I, I didn't even give Him my heart. If I did, I took it back. It was in 1985, 28 years old, I gave Him my life. I gave Him my life to spend it as He saw fit. To make a commitment to go his way. I surrendered my life. Glenn Lester Duck, the guy I was walking with today, he's always asking me, what are you preaching about tonight? And I just, I believe the Lord's in it and I keep telling him. And I said, Glenn Lester died in 1985. He died. He died. He's following, he's living the life of another. And that's what we're all called to do. We're all called to live a life of another. Jesus comes by and he says, hey, can I, use, can, can I relive my earthly life all over again? Can I use your body? Can I use your mouth, your feet, your legs? Can I use you? Can I use your body? Offer your body as a living sacrifice. This is your worship. I beg you, Paul says. He, he, it's like he's putting his arm around a Christian brother. I beg you, brother, by the mercies of God, offer your body as a living sacrifice. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing this. If you go on feelings, you won't go very far. It's a surrendering. It's a dying daily. Uh, Paul says, I die daily. And when I, when I see that I die daily, to me, what that says is, daily, he says no to himself, and he says yes to the Lord. No to self, and yes to the Lord. That's a dying daily. I've died, although I surrendered back in 85, there's many times, many deaths since then. I say no to myself, and yes to him. That's a death. If you had something else you wanted to do tonight, you came here, thank you. That's a death. You said no to your own flesh, and you say yes to Him. Amen. But surrendering, surrendering. The Paul is crying here. here. Their glory is their shame. He's talking about Christians here. I was teaching this years ago, and you've got to suffer long. But I remember in work at the Bible study, I was teaching this, and sometimes I know... Even when I say certain things, it's going to be rejected. But I have to say it anyway. I even knew it in the Bible study because I, you have to preach the gospel in season, out of season. And I, I know certain words are going to rouse some people up, but I say, Lord, I come in fear and trembling, but I come in your name, not my own name. And so you come and you preach this, and I think about 10 of them are, that's talking unbelief. No, it isn't. Because he says, who's minding earthly things? An unbeliever can only mind earthly things. Why would Paul weep over that? 
Paul is weeping over the Jonas, so to speak. He's mining the earth, the Ninevites, the Assyrians. You know, he, he's mining the earthly things. And I told you that's satanic. When you're mining the earthly things over your minding his kingdom, that's satanic. Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. It's nice when the Lord gives you some gems. That's what the Lord gave me a few, last year. You know, when yeah. Peter rebuked Jesus, and Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. You got in mind the things of man, not the things that are God. Mm. That's satanic. And we got and I'm not saying don't fix your roof and don't make a living. I'm talking about you work, you do what you need to do. But your main focus in life is not you, it's him. Amen. It's seeking his right. kingdom first, being about his business. Amen. And it's it doesn't fill church pews. It it doesn't, you know, bring in a lot of offerings, so to speak. And not many's gonna get this. The majority in the Bible turned away. Majority in the Bible, we're not following this path. Don't ever follow the majority in the Bible. And I went through the different things just about every week I'm here. Many twelve spied out the land. Only two of them were, the, were of another spirit. Ten other, uh, you know, they saw the giants. In Sardis there, they, many had soiled their clothes. They were no longer walking in white. But a few still were walking with the Lord. And all throughout the Scriptures. Don't miss it. But the majority of Christians today, that I see it in here, and I'm teaching the Word of God, have turned aside. Or they're, 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 they're about their own interest. We're going to see it a little bit here. But so it's, let's go to John chapter 6. and Like I said, we're going to look at different Scriptures. Let the Scriptures speak for themselves. But Jesus has been taking His disciples along. He's had many more disciples than just the twelve. In John chapter 6, verse 68, I'm sorry, verse 66, he, he's teaching a hard teaching, the disciples say here. I'm in John chapter 6, verse 66. It says, From that time, many of his disciples, who's, who's his? From that time, many of his disciples went back. And walk no more with them. Now, if you'd have met them, they'd have said, Oh, I'm born again. If you met them, where's Jesus at? Oh, he's over there. Why aren't you following him? Why would he? So there, there were many disciples who went back and walked no more. They were enemies of the cross of Christ. Not so to speak, enemies of Christ, but enemies of the cross. They, they saw the cross and they, they went over here. They didn't want to lose their life. There was a cost involved. I like when Jesus is walking along. I've mentioned it. Some disciples come and say, Hey, uh, I want to follow you, but first let me bury my dad or let me go back. And he says, Let the dead bury their dead. He was saying it. He was looking into their heart conditions. We have a written word here. He wasn't saying it being mean. He, it, it gets down to priorities. First, seek his kingdom first, not your own kingdom. We must be about his business. Jesus got that early on in life. I must be about my father's business. Not about your own interest. So many walk no more with them. And like I said, if you'd have met any of them disciples, they'd say, oh, I'm born again. I got saved. Are you following him, though? Are you wholeheartedly following him? Many stopped walking with him. The whole Bible is full of it. Many stopped walking. And then Jesus looks at the twelve. At the 12. And he says to the twelve, verse 67. I actually shared this today in the Bible, the Bible study, the first part of it, I'm going to finish it tomorrow. One of the brothers said, well, you know, like he, he, he was referring to John there where they were not from us, but weren't of, of us. And I said, well, all I can speak is what I'm saying here. We don't explain away the Scriptures. Many of His disciples walk no more. See, when we're faced with the truth, we want to look somewhere else and make it say someone wants to say, no, many of His disciples... Walk no more with them. You and I can stop at any time, shipwreck our faith, and come into great destruction and loss. So he looks at the twelve. He said, "Are you going to go away too?" Simon Peter said, "We're where to go. You have the words of eternal life. And when you think of eternal life, please just don't think about heaven, the afterlife. And that's true. But Jesus came. He says, "I've come that you might have life." It might have it more abundantly. Please do not focus always after the afterlife. 
And that's true. Everlasting life, that's true. But let's stay here. I always used to kind of run also. It's natural. Our minds would run out, in, out there somewhere. When you're fasting, you know, don't, you know, wash your face. Don't go around like, hey, I'm, I'm fasting. I'm fasting. You know, others, because, you know, I'll reward you openly, he says. And I thought maybe when you get to heaven, that, I believe that's talking about on the earth. Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing, and I'll reward you openly. He'll reward you by believe, giving it his character. Abram said, what are you going to reward me with? And the Lord said, I am your exceeding and great reward. I am. I am. You know, just like Brent was saying on the way here, you know, he, he's working in our lives. He's working. He, as we confess, it, it's a God thing. It's a God's work. He who began a good work in you, it's His work. He who began a good work in you will orchestrate it out. You know, we'll work it out. We'll perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. And I used to run it talking about end times. And that's to the day that He's formed in you. Jesus Christ is made and formed in your life. And that's, you know, it's He that endures the end shall be saved. To continue to walk in, in, his, in His ways. So the cross, the big S does not stand for Superman. It stands for selfishness. The whole Christian life, the Lord's chipping away. He wants you to have self nailed on the cross. Self. Paul says, I died. With, I no longer live. I'm crucified with Christ. Like two trunks of the trees in the woods that come up. And like where they, where they come together to one. And they kind of like, one goes straight up. So it's Paul says, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. I know how to make money, Mike. I really do. I know how to make, I, I, I can do it. I, I've seen uh, family members with, with rental properties and cars. I can make money. I have chose not to. I have chose to be about to father's business. It's a serious thing. I tell the guys down in, down in jail, you know, if you want God to be serious about your situation, you've got to be serious about Him. That's right. mm -hmm. If you want to give Him 50% of yourself, He only can give you 50% of Him. If you give him 75%, he gives you 7 If you give him all of you, you he can give them, himself all to you. We have to make room for him. So it's, you know, that stuff is bad. He's killed a lot of the earthly desires. You know, a new car, uh, all these things, that don't interest me. And I'm not faulting anybody that has a new car or a house or any of these things. But I must be about my father's business. You know, this week I had a good opportunity, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I was able to minister to a hospital to an individual, and he was so touched, he put his gown up like this. He was weeping. I read him Psalm 139. You know, you have a heart for those in the hospital. You have a heart for people in nursing home. You have a heart. And, and there's needs all over the place. What's the Lord having you to do? I'm not telling you to be focused on doing. I'm telling you to be focused on your relationship with Christ. And as you follow Him, He'll lead you and guide you. I just There's needs all over the place. You know, I, I can't meet all the needs. You know, guy works telling me about this and that. You know, I, I don't feel led to get involved in that. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm just telling you. But what's the Lord speaking to you? What, what's He have you to do? And when I went to this man's house the other day, he, I'm going to go to his house this week coming up, and, and he hugged me hugged me tight. You know, I'm looking forward to, to giving him Jesus. Not Glenn Lester. But I believe the more He works in secret in our lives, what are you doing in secret? It's, it's, it's manifested out from you. What are you, bringing, what are you bringing in here? You know, someone like somebody was into pornography, some husband, some father, and he, told, uh, he was telling somebody, a fellow friend, that uh, they were talking about it. He said, my kids never knew it. My family never knew it. And he said, yeah, but you brought that spirit into the house. You're in the church. What are you bringing into the church each day? Every, every Friday here. What spirit are you of? What are you giving yourself to? What are you thinking about? You know, you bring the spirit of God into the church here. Our little church out in uh, Hopewell there, I know Sunday morning's our best service. Because, the, you know, the spirit of God comes in, in the, the people bring it in from all week. What are you doing in secret? What are you, what, what are you thinking about? What are you watching? What's your desire? It matters. It matters. This is the only gospel I've come to know. This is the only gospel I teach. I don't teach a 
Two different, this is the gospel and lose your life. Lose it now. God's looking for a death in your life before you die physically. Lose your life. The Lord wants to kill it that He can make alive. And that's what He wants. And I'm not speaking, you know, like Jesus told uh, Peter, you know, I'm going to the cross, I'm going to suffer, and He will, oh no, no, no. But He never heard the rest of the story like Paul Harvey. The rest of the story is, I'm going to rise again. See, everybody wants resurrection life. Everybody wants to be like Jesus, but nobody wants to go to the cross. Everybody wants to circumvent the cross. See, it's through the cross. You, you die, you know, you bring that to death. Christ working in your life. You live for Him. I never asked to go to the jail. I never asked to go overseas. I never asked to, you know, I don't understand what I'm saying, but it's, I just say yes, I'm available. I'm available, yes. If I know it's the Lord and, and He's asking me. I turned down very few opportunities. I only have so much strength each day, each week. And you know, you only have so much every day. What am I giving myself to? If I spend it on vanity and the Lord has an opportunity over here, I I'm too tired today. I'm too tired. Well, maybe the Lord wants you to start throwing off the weights. Run, run, throw off every weight. Not necessarily sin. Throw off every weight. And the sin that so easily, easily entangles you. You don't run a race with a weight jacket on. You know, you don't run it. You, you peel that off. I don't want a lot of weights. I don't want two hot water tanks. Mm -hmm. I don't want two furnaces. I don't want, you know, I'm careful what I, what I give myself to. It's such a satisfaction to be about the Father's business. Follow on Him. I find nothing like it. Nothing that uh, satis satisfies me like Him. There's a way that seems right. Today, there's a way that seems right to a man. At the end, it leads to death. We, we relate all these scriptures to the wicked and the unsaved. There's a way that seems right. It seemed right that this, this mind is enmity against God. He wants to transform your thinking. He wants to you know, mold and make you and shape you. He wants you to have the mind of Christ. That's what He wants to put in you, the mind of Christ. I told you I have a friend that around Easter time, he always said, Glenn, what are you giving up for, eat, for Lent? And I tell him, every, it's almost, you know, I tell him, I says, well, you, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I was waiting for you to ask me this year, David, you know, because I'm not giving up chocolate or ice cream. You're giving up your life for Lent. You're giving your, up your life all year round. It doesn't change. And he's continually, uh, more and more, give, giving yourself so it's losing your life. Losing your life more and more that you may gain His life. There's a song that I heard about a year ago. I wrote it down. It says, I found life when I gave up mine. And we all have that syndrome. I had it for years. You're first, Lord. I'm speaking to Christians tonight. I'm not speaking to the world of Rochester out here. Mm -hmm. The syndrome, you're first, Lord. After me, after me, and he sees the heart. Mm -hmm. Lord said he scripture says, I, the eyes of the Lord run, run to and fro. Run to and fro, looking for uh, to show himself strong on behalf, whose hearts are perfect towards him. That word perfect means completely his. I believe he. He's, he's like this. I believe there's so few. I believe the imagery here, he's so few. He, it said he, he looks all over the, the whole earth. He looks over the whole earth looking for hearts that are completely his. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many, I heard a preacher say this, and I like truth. You don't see that in the Bible. And I, I don't really believe it happened, but I still like it. He said when the, the angel appeared to Mary, the mother of Jesus, I wonder how many... Uh, Small homes, uh, how many uh, mundane homes, so to speak, how many homes in Nazareth did he go to before he found one Mary? Mm. You know, I like that thought. I believe the angel only went to Mary because he knew. But I, I like the idea behind it, though. Mm -hmm. Go to this house, this house. Who, who is going to follow my will and not their own? Mm. 
Mary said, my body and soul is yours, Lord. I am under your authority. Your will be done. Mm -hmm. I want to be about your business. Mm -hmm. And she said, yes, yeah, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm yours. I am your servant. Let it happen just as you say. First Corinthians 9. First Corinthians 9. My pastor said for years I have to beat my body and put it in subjection. He said for years I tell my body to sit on and shut up. And, he, and I, I was coming across the scripture and I said that, that's exactly, that, that scripture's in the Bible. Tell your body to sit down and shut up. That, that's what it is right here. Paul says, I, I, keep my, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. Paul says, I keep my body in subjection. It don't rule me, I rule it. I tell my body to sit down and shut up. You've let me long enough. You, you speak to yourself. I can't, you can't go on feelings. I told you, Pastor Love used to go on missions trips and all them kids, he had six kids, would grab, grab a leg and be dragging them to the door. I remember in Bible school, he said, you know what, Glenn? He said, you have to, he was teaching a class, he said, you have to trip on your feelings. The Lord asked me to do sometimes, and did you ever see like in cartoons where your knee knocks? I was at to do a, help do a funeral uh, of a dear saint, Marguerite Dill. She used to load us up in a station wagon, take us to all these Monday night, uh, Christian Missionary Alliance uh, youth rallies all over the valley here. She'd give us a dollar each. We'd stop at McDonald's. Great woman of God. You know, I... And, uh, you know, I mean, what a, what a great lady she was. And, uh... I forget what I was going at. But, uh... Yeah, where was I going at? But, uh... Let's go to John, John 10. Okay, back to the funeral. That's where I was going with it. She passed away, and they called me and worked the daughter and said, Would you be in? Would you? I know Mom would want you to help with the funeral. And you talk about knee knocking. You know, them little cartoons you might see knee knocking? You think this is easy? See, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not me. But usually when I get a call like that, or I was called to do a, a pastor appreciation Sunday for a pastor, he, he was going to be in a service. Twice they asked me. Their church asked me. They gave him the Sunday off. He's sitting there, and they asked me, they said, we want you to preach for pastor appreciation Sunday, and we want you to, uh, we want you to direct it towards pastor appreciation. And before I got off the phone, I was all worked up. I said, I don't even know their pastor. The Holy Spirit communicated within five minutes. You don't know him, but you know the pastors you've had. And I shared about all the pastors, what they've meant to me over the years. How she had surgery 5.30 in the morning, and the pastor was you know, down there. Uh, you know, He said, I know you guys have prayed already, but he was there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. he, you know, you, know you, you share what you've experienced and the Lord was in it. But it's, this, this Christian life is not easy, but He's there. You follow Him. He's guiding, He's directing, and you say yes. He wants to use your body. Bless me, last week after Kim, uh, after the service there, she said her son Zachary remembered us when we came down to the jail and ministered to him down there. I said, well, tell Zachary well, we're out here on Friday night. Tell him to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're all good. So John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. Jesus speaking here, Therefore does my Father love me. Why does my Father love me? Because I laid down my life that I may take it up again. So this is why the Father loves me. Jesus is speaking here because I laid down my life. Only to have it taken up again. No man takes it from me, 
But I lay it down of myself, and you and I have the same power. We're not taking anything away from the Lord. The Lord's given us the same power to lay down our life, or the same will, you could say, to lay down your life, or to pick it back up again and live for you. So, just like He had, you have the power to pick your life up, go where you want to go, or you have the power to lay it down. Lay it down. No man takes it from me. It's a voluntary service. I lay it down on myself. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up again. So this is, it's all about Him. All about him. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. where Jesus rebukes Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. We're not going to read that, but Matthew 16, verse 24 and 25. If you were writing it down, right, start verse uh, 21 through 25, where, where Jesus rebukes Peter. That's satanic when you're minding the things of the earth. More than minding the things of God. Verse 24, Then Jesus said to His disciples, and again He's speaking to His disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross. Now we all thankful for the Lord's cross. But he wants me to come to pick, pick up your cross. Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And we're not talking about heaven and hell here. We're not talking about heaven here at all. Heaven and hell. We're talking about life and death. Finding and losing. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So if you save your life, meaning I think I'm going to let the young guys get down to jail, let the young guys go overseas, let the young guys start preaching here, I think I'm just going to take a back seat and come when I feel like coming. That's saving my life. Mm -hmm. The Lord has called me here, and that's saving my life. I, By doing that, I will lose out on the life the Lord has for me in here. Whoever shall save his life shall lose it. Whoever will lose his life for my sake. So you keep laying down your life. You lay it down. You lay it down. You lay it down. And you find this life. He that lays it down shall find it's a Christian principle. When we talked a few weeks ago about Christian principles. To be poor is to be rich. To be strong in the Lord is to be weak. And we see here to have life. We must lose ours to find life. To find life. The Father knows best. This sounds like death. Who wants this? You live your life. You take care of yourself. You're only go around once. You hear the scripture of people say. And the Lord says, lose your life. Matthew 6.33. I remember I come home from work. Threw myself on a bed. I had three little kids. Had a high school education. No college. No No skill. I said, Lord, I cry out to the Lord. I got my Bible open. He took me to Matthew chapter 6. It, it, it was just like it was written personally for me. I know I've said it before, but I don't apologize for saying the same things over again. There's no magic formula here. I'm glad it's simple enough, profound enough that somebody simple like me can grab it. He says, seek my kingdom first. Mm -hmm. Now I had everything you need to life. See the birds over there? I was worried about money. They don't sow a reaper store away in barns. Mm -hmm. And yet I feed them. They don't store up for a rainy day and I take care of them. They're only worth a few pennies and I take care of them. How much more viable are you? And it spoke right off the page. And somehow the Lord convinced me at that moment there, I have a, and I called her in the house, or I called her in the room, I said, Brendan, I have a direction for the first time in my life. I have a direction. I, will, I am seeking His kingdom first. And I've not done it perfectly. I have failed, but I, failure is only failure if you're quit. Peter experienced failure when he looked around in the storm, when he started high-stepping, walking to Jesus. He was doing good as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. But our problem is we start looking around at the storm and we begin to sink. He cries out. And failure is not failure if you end up in the Lord's arms. So all my, you know, Failures, I tell the guys in jail all the time, I said, if you're here and your failures lead you to Jesus, it's been a good experience here. I told them last week, I said, 
If you weren't in jail in this affliction here, would you would you be even attending church somewhere listening to this word here? But today you're here with your ears, you're there two hours listening to the word. It's a great place to minister. Not, not everybody likes this word. Not everybody has, you know, I like because here I, I feel I have full freedom here. Many, many pla uh, places, many times I feel like a, you know there's a hindering spirit here. I feel very open here, Michael, to lay it out there, to preach the word. That's good because it's it's laying it out. It's 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 the full gospel. Let's go to John 21. John 21. John 21, this is where Jesus is reinstating Peter. He said, do you love me, Peter? Do you love me, Lord? You know all things. You know I love you. Verse 20, chapter 21, verse 18. He's talking about feed my sheep. And he says, for sure, for sure, verily, verily, I say unto thee, when you were young, you gird yourself and walk us wherever you wouldest. The way I relate to this, and when I was a young Christian, I walked wherever I wanted to go. If I wanted to go on vacation, if I wanted to go here, I wanted to go this for Friday night or this Tuesday night. I didn't even check in with the Lord. I didn't, you know. When I was young, I just went wherever I wanted to go. But now as you begin to learn and you begin to seek Him and you begin to grow and mature, it says, but when you are old, I, I see this older in Christ, you shall stretch forth your hands and another gird you and take you where you wouldn't go in the natural. He, he's literally taken me, put me on a flight, and sent me overseas for 26 days, and I, I was so weak, I was sure, I didn't even know if I could get on the airplane. He was carrying me. And all I said was, Lord, here I am. I, I, I was sick, I didn't feel good, Jen was sick, and I, I, I was worried, I don't know whether I could do it. And I was sitting there working for the Lord. You know, sometimes, you sometimes sit before the Lord, close your Bible, sit before Him. Be still and know God, just sit before Him. And I can remember he brought that word, a rhema word, right to my heart. And he says, trust me with all your heart. Lean not on your own thinking. And he didn't finish the verse, he doesn't have to, he's God. But I was sitting there, I was worried about, if I go over there and get more sicker, if I go over there and get up, he says, trust me with all your heart. Lean not on your own thinking. And that's what I was doing. You're either trusting him tonight with your whole heart, or you're leaning on your own thinking. You're either doing one or the other. One or the other. But, uh, you know, never shall gird the Holy Spirit and carry you where you wouldn't go in the natural. I'd have never went these ways. I'd have never went certain places He's led me. Never. But He's carrying me. I'm not going. He's carrying me. Verse 19, don't miss this. This He spoke signifying but with death He should glorify God and I know they say Peter died upside down and everything, but I'm seeing something totally different here. I'm not saying he did or didn't, but this is a death that glorifies God. Do you want to glorify God? This is the death that glorifies God. And when he has spoken this, he said, follow me. This is the death that glorifies God. Death to self. Lose your life. Let him lead. Follow him. Put forth your hands. And let him gird you and take you. This is the death. Death to self. Philippians 2. You know, we were made for His pleasure. It says in Revelation, we were made for His pleasure. We are created for His pleasure, His purposes. For His pleasure. That's why we're created. Not for our own to live life for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we get so focused on the world, you know, again, don't make fun of a blind person. How about look, let's look in the mirror. Let's behold Christ. He wants to work in you. You follow me. Sometimes I would say you know, to my wife, you know, certain things, but you know, the Lord says, you follow me, Glenn. And the Lord says to her, you follow me. But I want to take the Amen. Holy Spirit shovel. I'm sitting in church and the pastor's preaching. Maybe I want to take that shovel and throw it back to somebody else. No, no, you follow me. Mm -hmm. The call is to you follow me. What's he saying to me? This verse here, 
The Lord showed me this verse here. It's fantastic. I've used it before here, but it just... Paul is, is ministering here, and he's going to send Timothy down to see how they're, how they're doing spiritually. And he goes on and says, i got no one who will care for you like Timothy. Philippians 2, 20 and 21. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state, referring to Timothy. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Let me, let me add more to this to try to describe it. To, to, to make it uh, open it up for you. For all seek their own interest, their own wills, and not the interest of Jesus Christ. The Living Bible says everyone else seems to be worrying about their own plans and not those of Jesus Christ. And naturally, I don't believe I don't believe all. I believe all is not a good uh, word here in the English language. Here, uh, it's not all because it could be all. But Paul and Timothy were two of them, so it doesn't mean all. But I believe the idea, the thought here is the majority of Christians are about their own interests first, their own plans, their own goals first, and not the interest of Jesus Christ. So the Lord is looking for those who seek Him and be about His business. He says tonight, will you live for me? My life lived out in you. Will you live for me? Will you surrender? Lord, help me to surrender. Help me to surrender. I am my shepherd, Psalm 23. Everybody knows Psalm 23. I am my shepherd. I know what I want. I lead myself beside the rough one. I, I, I. No, no. David knew it wasn't in man to direct his own steps. The Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me. He's guiding me. The Lord. What's God after in all this? What, what is He after? Offer your body as a living sacrifice. That's your worship. That's your spiritual worship. Whatever that would mean, you let the Holy Spirit teach you. What does that mean? Where can, where can you allow Him to cut in some, some of our self-life? He wants to cut away more and more of our self-life. It said of David that David served the Lord in his generation in Acts there. He fulfilled all the will of God of David. David served the Lord in his generation. Well, what will be said about you and I? I serve myself and my generation. I exalt thee. I like that. I exalt thee. Do you exalt it by your choices in life? The book of Haggai, they started out exciting. They laid the foundation. They were excited. They got saved. You remember when you got saved? Your testimony should be changing. Ask them for testimony. Your testimonies shouldn't go back 20 years. Well, you know, when I got saved, when I was, you know, that's a good testimony. But what's he doing this week? What's he doing last week? What's he doing today? Your testimonies ought to be continually as you're following him. He's opening your eyes, opening your ears. God's making all things new. He's working in your life. New testimonies. That's right. Well, I got back here. One guy said I was a Christian because I was honest 30 years ago. Okay. Come on. What's the Lord doing in your life today? I like what you shared, Brendan. You know, the, on the way over, the Lord's speaking. You know, we're listening. Are we listening? Watch and pray you don't fall. Pay attention to what's going on in here. Luke 14. I've got about four or five more scriptures. Bear with me. Luke 14. Like I said, the book of Haggai there, they laid the foundation, was all excited, but they, they they turned aside and they began to take care of their own paneled homes. You know, we've talked about the book of Haggai there. Mm -hmm. And God sends the prophet Haggai and he says, Stop! Consider your ways. You know, you want you're wanting to bless, you want me to bless you, but you're all about your own business. I, I can't do that. Begin to build the house of God first. Begin to seek mm -hmm. my kingdom first. And watch me yeah. or test me. Luke 14, verses 26 and 27. 
if any man comes after me, I like this. Please write this down and take a good look at it. If any man comes to me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, and his children, and brother, now please, that word hate means to love less. It doesn't mean like hate like we, you know, it means to love less. So if any man comes after me and does not love less, his mother, father, wife, children, brothers, sisters, and yeah, I like the last one here. Yeah, his own life, unless you hate your own life, you hate your own life. You're not living for you. He cannot be my disciple. Wow. So it sounds like every disciple is a Christian, but it doesn't sound like every Christian becomes a disciple. Because there's a condition here. You must love all these other competitive relationships less in your own life. Lay it down, brother. Lay it down, whatever that means. Get rid of the weights, lay it down. He doesn't want to take from you. He wants to give you. He's been speaking to you for a long time. The Father, there used to be a TV show, The Father Knows Best. You remember that, Tony? The, fa the Father Knows Best. But we get our mind involved here. You know, like James says, you know, count a joy, brother, when you go through various trials. He says things in the Scripture that doesn't line up with my thinking. But that's where you're not to lean on your own thinking. Mm -hmm. And whoever, verse 27, does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Bear his cross. He goes down here and starts talking about anyone who, you know, sits down first. You've got to count the cost. Don't start building a the foundation and then leave off and, you know, everybody's going to make fun of it and say, why don't you have enough to finish it? The Lord's all about finishing. Mm -hmm. This man began to build, but he wasn't able to finish. Many people start out salvation. They come to know Christ. But they do not continue to follow Him. Mm -hmm. They do not follow Him fully. You know, because they get shipwrecked somewhere. This whole world's designed to get, you, get your focus off of here. In spirit, you're like, they're like this. And the, you know, you, the devil, the, uh, the world, your own flesh is your greatest enemy. Trying to stop everything God's trying to do in your life. But if God is for you, who can be against you? The Lord didn't want you to start and, and, and quit along the way. And everybody, you know, what happened to you? You started building and you, you left off the building process. The Lord is the author and finisher of your faith. He wants to finish you. Finish your faith. Mm -hmm. John 12. John 12, 24, 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall on the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it died, it brings forth much fruit. He's not talking here about a, a corn of wheat. He's talking about your life. Long as you live for you, you're just going to abide alone, one person. But if you fall on the ground and die, the self-life dies, it brings forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. If you love your life, you're going to lose it. I'm going to love my life. Oh, I love my life. I'm going to live for me. Christian, you, you can do this as a Christian. You can live for you. Mm -hmm. You can still attend church and you're still a Christian. He that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. So you, you hate your life. In other words, you, you love less your own life. You're living the life of another. And he's adventurous. He's taken me in places I'd have never went. It has been an adventure. Mm -hmm. I thank God, I mean, how He's mm -hmm. led. It's not been easy. But do you have a resolve in your heart, a purposed heart? Daniel, purpose in his heart. And you have to have this resolve. Hell or high water, I'm, we're, we're going on. Mm -hmm. We're falling. Mm -hmm. John 5.
John 5, 30. Here's Jesus speaking here. John chapter 5, verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of my Father which has sent me. Jesus is saying here, I seek not my own will. Do you know that Jesus had a will? Some people think Jesus didn't have a will. Not my will, but your will be done. He had a will. Have you willed to do His will? Like uh, Psalm, what is it, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. I'd like to thank you for sharing your testimony. You were blessing me. I will bless you. I will. It's a matter of the will. I will, I will, I will. Bless the Lord at all times. Have you will to do His will? And 4, I think it's 4.34. Or right there, chapter 4, verse 34. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. Well, that's, that's, and we, we leave off where Jesus left off, so to speak. When we start where He left off. My me is to do the will of Him that sent me and to finish His work. So we're about His work, His business. Seeking His kingdom first, not second. First. Two more scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5. I will greatly encourage you to look at these scriptures in your devotional time. Read them, chew on them, let the Holy Spirit open things up to you. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 15.5 No, that ain't right. How about 5.15? Second Corinthians 5.15 it must be. Yeah, Second Corinthians 5.15, I'm sorry. Start with verse 14. For the love of Christ constrains us. For the love of Christ is with the driving force. It constrains us. Verse 15. In, in that He died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. So Christ died for, for us so that we who live shall not live for ourselves. We're not to live for ourselves but unto Him who died for them and rose again. In Corinthians there, earlier, Paul says, Know you not, know you not. What? He says, what? Don't you know that your bodies are not your own? 1 Corinthians 6, I think it's 19 and 20 if you write it down. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Know you not to your bodies and temple Holy Spirit? It is not yours, it's of God's. So honor him with your body. Must have been some Corinthians there that can you I, I'd say there must be a lot of Christian Christians today, the way that's worded there. Don't you know that you when you come to Christ, you're not your own? You've been bought with a price. You're under new ownership. You don't live for yourself anymore. You live for him. Hebrews 10. I like this scripture here. This is another nugget the Lord gave me. Hebrews chapter 10. Talking about offerings and sacrifices the Lord has no pleasure in. Hebrews chapter 10. Start at verse 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou has no pleasure. What is God? What is God after? What is He after? You, me. That's what He's after. Well, let me give you money, or let me give you some time at church. He wants you. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do Thy will, O God. Above, when He said sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, you wouldst not. You're not having any pleasure in, in these things here. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. 
And he may establish the second. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I'm sure he may speak to you different meanings of that. What he spoke to me is he's working to take away the first. He's working to take away my will. My will in this life sliding over that his will is established in my life. So he's working in my life to take away the first. To my will that he may establish his will. Not my will, mm -hmm. but your will be done. Your will be done. Amen. Psalm 143, 10 says, Teach us, Lord, to do your will. Teach us. Mm -hmm. So our feelings should go up and down, side to side, all over the place. You know, but it's it's him. It's following him, laying down your life, and picking up the life he has, so to speak, and following him. He's a good heavenly father. He's got our best interest. It sounds like he's taken. It sounds like death and loss. But no, it's victory in life. It's victory in life. And so, that's all I have. Amen. Amen.